the year was 1901, when friends invited a young college student living in Oslo, Norway, to a concert sponsored by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was impressed and began attending meetings. Shortly after, he was baptized a member. He was a gifted art major and was offered a scholarship to study in Rome. But instead, in 1905, he chose to immigrate to Utah. Once there, his talent was recognized and he was commissioned over the years to work on the Salt Lake Temple, the Salt Lake Tabernacle, the Hawaii, the Alberta, Idaho Falls, Mesa, and Los Angeles temples. It is very likely that you have admired the artistry of Torleif Nafhus somewhere in your travels. When the church acquired the Smith Farm and the Hill Camorra in 1928, Torleif felt impressed that a monument needed to be raised to commemorate the beginnings of the restoration. Accordingly, he prepared seven sketches of a statue to be raised on the Hill Camorra. One night in 1929, he climbed to the top of Enzyme Peak in Salt Lake City and spread the sketches out on the ground before him. He then prayed to know if he was doing the right thing. Would the brethren even accept his idea? And which of the sketches was the right one? When he opened his eyes, there was a light all around him, and he could see every one of the seven sketches, even though it was dark. And then he saw an angel pointing with his finger to the one that he thought was the best and heard the angel say, this is the one. And then he asked, how will I approach the brethren? What will they think? Have I done the right thing to do this? And then the angel said, you go to the church offices in the morning. They will be waiting for you. He met the brethren the next day and they unanimously chose the one sketch pointed to by the angel. Torleif was commissioned to begin the work that would take him five years. Immediately, he began his search for a model to sculpt. He found that model in the physique of young Elwyn Clark, a bricklayer who had done some work for him. But though Elwyn's musculature was right, Torleif felt that his face was too young for Moroni. So he fasted and prayed for help. Then one day, he was walking in downtown Salt Lake City and saw a man who struck him as the perfect model. He followed him and studied his features. And finally, he approached the man and asked if he would be willing to model for this unique sculpture. Turns out the man was a rancher from Wyoming, recently returned to live in Salt Lake. Well, the man agreed and together they walked back to Torleaf's studio, which was not far. When they walked in, Elwyn Clark was still there. Can you imagine Torleaf's surprise when the two men, the two models, knew each other. In fact, the older gentleman was Hiram Don Carlos Clark, Elwin Clark's father. The monument atop Camorra was dedicated July 21st, 1935 by President Heber J. Grant. Today, each time I look up at that beautiful statue, I am reverentially reminded first of the sacred events of the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, of Moroni and the prophet Joseph Smith, and secondly, of the miracle of the monument itself, designed by revelation, chosen by an angel, and modeled by a miracle. I'm Glenn Rawson, and thank you. <laughs>